Welcome to Unit 2, Provide Sports Massage Techniques to Prevent and Manage Injury, Section 1, Soft Tissue Techniques. In this lecture, we are going to have a brief overview of what you are trying to achieve from the techniques. Selecting the right tools for the job, what a neuromuscular technique is and its purpose, what a soft tissue mobilisation technique is and their purpose, and potential technique contraindications. One of the primary aims of treatment is to optimise the client's range of movement. I say optimise and not maximise, as too much range can be just as detrimental as not enough, and you are looking to return them to normal. Range of movement can be limited by mobility, flexibility and pain, which are also the primary aims of treatment. Your treatment will aim to target those factors, but possibly not all at once. You may need to alleviate pain before you can tackle other factors, for example. In most cases, you will prepare your client by warming the tissues, first using techniques such as effluage and petrissage. This will prepare them both physiologically and psychologically. As a sports massage therapist, we need to select the most appropriate treatment for our client and their symptoms. To aid us in doing this, it is believed there is a biomechanical stress response sequence that initiates a chain reaction that will limit range of movement by reducing mobility, flexibility and increasing pain. So we need to break into this sequence and stop the chain reaction. And this will vary from client to client and issue to issue. Remember, no two people are the same, which means that no two issues are the same. And remember, it's important to continually evaluate your treatment to ensure you are gaining the best results. It is far too easy to do the same thing week in and week out and not really get the best results for your client. And that's where you'll make a difference between being an excellent practitioner and just a practitioner. So the key points in this sequence are a stressor increases local muscle tone, metabolic waste accumulates, Local musculature suffers oxygen deficiency. There could be potential oedema. There could be inflammation or chronic irritation. Adhesions can develop. Sensory feedback is affected, so it becomes hypersensitive. Motor reactions are affected, such as hyperreactivity or hyperactivity. Trigger points can develop and increased muscle tone results in the inhibition of muscle antagonists which creates abnormal stresses. So you can end up in a loop of these sequences, so things will slowly get worse. So our goal is to break into this cycle, which will help to slowly unwind the issues that have developed. Let's move on to neuromuscular techniques and their purposes. These techniques include trigger points, positional release and muscle energy techniques, METs. You've probably heard or have done PNF, uh, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. These are very, very similar techniques to METs, but METs are a little gentler, so a little kinder to your client. Neuromuscular restrictions to movement are primarily hyperactive proprioceptors. Basically, these are the neurons that help the body understand where it is. There are various ones that deal with the position of the joints and muscles. You have muscle spindles found within the muscles, Golgi tendon organs found in the tendons and joint receptors obviously found in the joints. The other neuromuscular primary restriction to movement are trigger points. These are areas often classed as crisis within the muscle. So it's a very small area of muscle that has gone into crisis. These areas are overexcitable muscle, often no bigger than the size of a pea. If you have ever had a trigger point, you will probably wonder how such a small area can cause such problems and it has a habit of creating referred pain. Moving on to soft tissue mobilisation techniques, these include transverse frictions, soft tissue release and connective tissue massage, also known as myofascial release. We are now looking at targeting the tissues directly and manipulating these tissues to remove the physical blocks that are restricting movement. These restrictions are most commonly adhesions, meaning an abnormal adherence within the tissues. These are common after injury or trauma, um, or if an area has been underused. So for example, if it's been immobilized in a plaster cast, 
um, or where an area has been overused or overstressed. So if you do a very repetitive movement and the muscle can't deal with it. So that's another example. Adhesions can be found in various areas of soft tissue. They can be intramuscular within the muscle. So this is when the fibers become stuck together. Intermuscular between the muscles, preventing muscles from moving smoothly over each other. And binding soft tissue to bone, disrupting normal tissue function. This can include the muscle, tendons, ligaments or joint capsule along with the fascia. Basically, any soft tissue can become bound to other structures and develop adhesions. Finally and briefly, on to potential technique contraindications. These are pretty much common sense and would be the same for any technique in any situation. You should avoid overworking an area with intense techniques. Avoid techniques that cause excessive pain or neurological symptoms. Avoid direct treatment over an acute injury. Avoid invasive stretching during the subacute stage of an injury. Avoid working over inflamed areas and be prepared to refer when appropriate. All of these things will increase client discomfort and potentially irritate the issue further, having the opposite effect. Sometimes an issue demands a little bit more care, so going gentler can be a good starting point. You have now completed the overview of soft tissue techniques. You can now work your way through the quiz associated with the section and move on to the application of soft tissue techniques.